My friends, I am so honored to be here. I am so honored to be here with you. And I'm so honored to be in Vancouver and with Occupy Vancouver, because for me, the Occupy movement that is going global is the most important sign of a world waking up to the enormous danger of an all-embracing crisis and responding to it at last with passion and with intensity and with deep, deep love. So my thanks to you and my blessings on everything that we all do from this moment together. I want to begin by just quoting Rumi again for you and quoting a poem that means everything to me in this terribly difficult, terribly challenging, but terribly inspiring time that we all share. Passion burns down every branch of exhaustion. Passion is the supreme elixir and renews all things. So don't sigh heavily, your brows bleak with cynicism and boredom. Dare to look for passion, 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 passion. Futile solutions deceive the force of passion. They are marshy and stagnant bandits who extort money through lies. So run, my friends. Run far away from all false solutions. Let divine passion triumph and rebirth you in yourself. I've come here to thank you for beginning a global movement that I think and believe and hope and pray will change world history. And I come here with four humble suggestions for the unfolding of this movement. Because without really thinking deeply and planning deeply and getting very, very smart and very, very grounded, all of the marvelous enthusiasm that has flowered so beautifully all over the world will run aground. Now is the time, I believe, to take a very, very deep stock and to plan for what lies ahead. So my four suggestions are about this kind of planning. The first suggestion that I offer you humbly is that it will soon become very important not only to say a very strong no, as we are saying, to the environmental damage, to the crazy rule of the corporations, to the corruption of the politicians, to the continuing madness of the death machine on every level. We must say that no, and we must say it firmly and strongly and passionately. But saying no will not be enough for a world global movement, because we must also say an immense yes, a huge, wild, deep, peaceful, passionate yes to a wholly new way of being and doing everything that can provide the foundations for the creation of a new world. And we must make our vision so inspiring and our dream for the future so noble and so encouraging that millions of people who are now ready to wake up will want to join with us to do whatever they can to bring the new world into birth. It is very, very, very important that this movement isn't seen only as a reaction, but as a eruption, an eruption of joy, an eruption of purpose, an eruption of passion for a wholly new way of being and doing everything, on every level, in every realm. The second suggestion that I have for us flows from that first very deep, passionate point that I've tried to share. The second suggestion is that very soon we will need to get very much smarter and more organized. And what that will mean, I believe, is that we will need to create a global party, a global party of 
people from all over the world linked by the internet and by a very, very clear mission statement that brings all of the truth of what we want to see in the world out for everyone to see and be inspired by. And what I want to suggest is this. I want to suggest that the movement realizes something very, very clearly, which is that we will not be able to trust the existing political parties. We will not be able to trust the corporations. We will not be able to trust any of the structures that are now in place because they are all now rotten and corrupt and dedicated whatever they say to the continuation of a system that is now destroying everything. What we need to do is to come together and pose a complete and radical and clear and passionate alternative on every level. And what that will inquire, what will that re will require is that we have a global movement with a global headquarters and parties in every land which represent that mission statement that we come to create. So that will need to be put into place. And what we will also need to do is to invent, and I mean invent, a new form of organization that respects both the truths of equality and of the incredible diversity of all of the people who make up this movement, but also has an elected council which is transparent to the whole movement and also chooses spokespeople for the movement so that the whole vision and the demands of the movement can get out. Do not let the existing structures co-opt this movement. Let us get stronger, clearer, smarter, more and more organized, and really start a global grassroots revolution of love in action. This is the only thing that can now transform the planet. What I also would love to suggest to you is that, and here I have to look at my notes because I got up at five o'clock this morning in Chicago. <laughs> so <laughs> what I would also like to suggest to you is this. When we make the mission statement for this movement, it must have very clear, very specific, very radical demands for the transformation of every realm of economics, politics, and society. And above all, I believe, it must concentrate on two interlinked things, without which our whole movement is already born dead. The first thing it must concentrate on is a vision of ecological safety for the planet. A vision that demands a complete transformation in the way we treat and honor the creation and a complete transformation in all of our environmental policies. This means nothing less than demanding that laws restricting carbon emissions and restricting the depredation and destruction of the planet are put into operation as quickly as possible because the whole planet is now threatened by overwhelming disaster if these kinds of demands are not immediately instituted. The second demand that is absolutely crucial for the success of any radical global movement of love in action is that you and I and all of us demand finally that the corporations, all of them, are now regulated and now have to become transparent in their finances, responsible for ecological considerations and deeply, deeply committed to justice and compassion on every level through law. Because without the legal regulation of the corporations, nothing can now be done since they control everything, the politicians and the media. We must, as a global movement, say with one immense, strong, calm, 
but absolutely indomitable voice that the rule of the corporate mentality and the corporate power and the corporate money of the world is now beginning to be over. The last suggestion that I have for you is one that is born from a place very deep in my heart. I believe three things. I believe that we're in an immense evolutionary crisis and that there is a great death happening on the earth, which you can see very clearly now. It's happening in environmental degradation. It's happening in the increasing mad greed and power of the corporations that still keep going the death machine, even though they know that the planet is in danger. It's happening in the obvious explosion of crises that show us the corruption of the politicians. It's happening in a tremendous despair and paralysis that this movement that you are creating is designed to meet. This death is happening. But there is also on the earth right now a great birth taking place. A birth of a wholly new vision of relating to nature, relating to each other, relating to the divine and the sacred within, and finding extraordinary new strength and creativity and passion from that new relationship to go forward and create a new world. And this movement, this movement of Occupy Vancouver and Occupy New York spreading all over the world is the sign of that birth. Because what the birth is going to be is not the return of some Star Wars avatar and not any top-down legislation. What the birth is going to be is what you are showing. It's going to be millions and millions and millions and millions of people saying no to the death machine and its madness and yes to coming together to build a wholly new world. That birth is now here on the earth. And there is a birthing force, I believe, that is also here on the earth. And this too you are showing. And that birthing force is what I have called sacred activism. Because what I've noticed is that the two most sensitive groups of people who are reacting to this crisis are both in an old paradigm and disempowered. The mystics know that something is going on whenever they bother to get out of their meditative states on their cushions, but they're not responding with enough passion to the reality of the horror of the crisis. So they are drunk on transcendence. They are drunk on the light. They're addicted to the light and horribly uncommitted at this moment to the real work in the real world. The activists, on the other hand, as they have been, have been also addicted, addicted to doing, addicted to burnout, addicted to indignation, addicted to righteous anger at other people, instead of acknowledging the ways in which we all keep this madness going, and instead of grounding their action in the divine peace and the divine love and the divine wisdom. And what I've come to understand is that if you combine in yourself the deep, deep, knowledge and peace and passion and stamina and profound faith of the mystic with the undying and indomitable, brave, passionate hunger for justice on every level, then what happens inside you is that two fires fuse into one and a third fire is born, which is the fire of love and wisdom in action. So what I want to say to you in conclusion is this. This movement is a miraculous sign of the birth. And what has already been done is a revelation. But the road ahead is going to be very difficult. The powers that do not want this birth are immensely strong. What we need to be able to do 
is to ground our whole being in a vision of the sacred such as we ourselves believe and find it and we need to be able to be constantly fueled by the energy, by the peace, by the wisdom, by the unconditional and all-embracing compassion, and by the soul force, what Gandhi called satyagraha, that can only come from a grounding in the depths of one's deepest nature. So I beg you, I really beg you, that as we begin this movement, may we all find in ourselves that sacred center, that sacred center of connection with all life and with the divine that creates it, that can give us the force, the peace, the stamina, the power, the intelligence, and above all, the unshakable faith and conviction that will turn a beautiful sporadic movement into a huge movement of the wildfire of love in action going all over the world to bring down the old and birth at last the new. And we have very little time in which to do this massive work. But I believe with all my heart that the divine is blessing us all at this moment that the divine wants the transformation of the planet that we want, and that the divine will give us everything we need if only we turn to it in whatever way we understand it and really go forward organizedly, coherently, powerfully, uncorruptibly, and with great, great, steady commitment that will unfold and get greater as the difficulties emerge and the opposition gets crazier. So my friends, that is what I want to offer to you today. And I would love to hear from you any reactions that you have to what I have to say. It would be an honor and I feel very, very honored to be able to share these perceptions with you and to offer them to you for the future of our global movement. Thank you. I've just spoken at Occupy Vancouver and it was a very profound experience for me to be there, to be here and to be surrounded by people who are really turning up in this time to do something. I think the movement is still in its very young stages and there's a great deal of work and of argument and of worry ahead. But I feel that nothing is impossible if we organize and if we ground ourselves in the divine beyond dogma in the deeper spirituality of ourselves and really, really now, calmly, but with great decisiveness, move forward on every level to change this disaster into the garden for a new world. Thank you.